it is that time of the year when everybody talks about their backpacks and that is why today i want to tell you about my travel camera bag and the essentials that i bring wherever i go this video is brought to you by artlist my go-to service for awesome royalty free music I have streamlined this particular setup over the last three years to make it as minimalist as possible and I will tell you exactly my thoughts behind each of these items. I personally like camera gear that can deliver professional results but I prefer anything that has a small size and is lightweight over bulkier items. So for me portability really matters the most. Since I shoot both photo and video, my main choice is a mirrorless camera mostly as this is kind of the most versatile for my needs. First let's talk about the bag itself. My main backpack is the Peak Design 45 liter travel backpack and I chose this because it is exactly cabin size. It is ideal because it can be used as a day pack and it can be extended to fit additional clothes and so on. It has excellent quality overall. In fact, this is the second identical bag that I own. The first one broke down after two years of really heavy usage and the company has just sent me a free replacement, which is super awesome. Inside the bag, I have the large Peak Design camera module, which can fit my drone, lenses and several camera bodies. I change the content depending on how much gear I want to bring on a particular shoot. The top part usually stays a bit like empty for other items so that I can mix and match whatever I need. I usually use these Peak Design packing cubes to add additional clothes or that tag pouch for smaller items when I'm about to edit photos and videos and so on. There are a few modifications that I made. Firstly, I cut off the waist straps as they are always in the way and kind of useless. Secondly, I have added an AirTag holder so I can locate the backpack in case I ever forget it somewhere. That gives me peace of mind and in fact it has happened before that I lost stuff. Next, let's talk about the cameras that I like to use. I have two main camera bodies. My main camera that I use about 95% of all the stuff I shoot and all the time is the Canon EOS R5. I use this for photographs and to shoot mostly 4K video. I am super happy with it and it has only once overheated on me. The only point of criticism that I have however is that the file sizes are relatively large so it fills up quite a lot of hard disk space very quick. The price tag is also relatively high, so I think you could get away with an R6 and be able to produce almost the same results if you are on a tighter budget. The second camera body that I own is the EOS RP. It is my backup camera and very affordable and I mainly use this for time-lapse video or whenever I need to film myself with a second camera body in hand. My point of criticism is that the batteries are quite small and it doesn't really have usable 4K and the dynamic range and general image quality could be a little bit better sometimes, but it is very affordable and it greatly does the job as an entry-level full-frame camera and as my particular backup camera. Next, let's talk about my favorite lenses. I usually like to carry one wide angle and one tight lens, as I don't really have the need for like medium focal range that much. I recently had switched to the Canon EOS R mirrorless system and all of my lenses are RF lenses that are compatible with this. I had previously used the adapter for older EF lenses, which does the job also, but the RF range is very expensive, but also incredibly sharp and works incredibly well with the autofocus system on the Canon R5 and so on. So if you have the spare cash, I can definitely recommend the RF glass and I believe it's going to be future proof and maintain the value for quite a long time. The first main lens that I like to use is the Canon RF 15 to 35 mm, which I like to use for wider landscape shots and to film most of my YouTube videos. The second most favorite lens is the Canon RF 100 mm macro, which I use as a telephoto lens to shoot portraits and to get really up close to subjects and capture tiny, tiny details. I really like its versatility and the fact that it is relatively lightweight. I also own the 70 to 200 and I think it's a massive improvement over the older model as it is relatively small and kind of, you know, half of the size. However, I don't bring it as much as the 100 millimeters as it's still a little bit bigger and heavier. 
I never use any lens caps as I think they're useless, but instead I like to keep cheap UV filters on my lenses at all times, which ensures that they never get scratched. In fact, I never scratched any glass element of any of my lenses and I saved the hassle of bringing this like useless lens cap. For the bottom of the lens cap, I have designed stickers so I can identify them easily. So let me know if you find that interesting and if I should maybe release this as a product in the future. Who knows, but I really like the design of this. The main laptop that I use is the highest spec 16 inch MacBook Pro, which still works well, also for heavy 4K, 6K footage and so on. I wish I had the M1 of course, but once again, I'm saving money here as I don't think it's necessary to change and upgrade your computer every year. It's also not very sustainable and not good for the planet, so I'd rather wait for the next generation. As I said, upgrading gear isn't always necessary, but I think every creator needs royalty-free music in 2022. Artlist offers unlimited downloads of some of the best music in the industry. I've personally used them for over three years now, and you can too. Just check out the link in the description to receive two extra months. I own one action camera and I recently picked up this GoPro Hero 9 Black and I mainly use this as an underwater camera when I go diving or to the beach and I know I want to get some underwater shots. I wish I had a designated underwater housing for the R5 but I don't really go to the ocean enough to justify that. It's super large and bulky and I'm also kind of scared, you know, of water leakage so that way I could break the more expensive gear. So I'm cool with the GoPro for occasional use for that. The main drone that I use is the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, which is now over two years old. In fact, I owned several of them that are all crashed or destroyed, which is a shame, but I personally feel like the new Mavic 3 is a little too expensive and I can't really justify that price tag. I think this one still goes a long way as the one inch sensor has great low light performance, can shoot in log and so on. And if I crash this one, I might pick up another used Mavic 2 Pro as I have still most of the extra accessories, extra batteries and so on. And if DJI ever makes the Mavic 3 cheaper, then I would probably consider, but with the current price tag, it doesn't really make too much sense to upgrade for me. So I also recommend if you're looking for a budget drone, Mavic 2 Pro or Air 2S, I think is a bit better value for money compared to the Mavic 3. I used the Peak Design travel tripod that I backed on Kickstarter about two years ago. The quality is outstanding and it saves me a lot of space. However, I made one mistake. I tried to save money and bought the metal version initially and now I totally regret it not buying the more lightweight carbon version. Every gram really counts when you're going on hikes or something and I feel like the carbon version really makes a difference. So maybe I should find somebody to trade this and then upgrade to the carbon fiber version. But yeah, obviously the metal version does the job for me now. It's really like kind of first world problems. The only audio devices that I own are the Rode VideoMic Pro that I use to capture audio whenever I record videos for YouTube and the smaller Rode wireless mic with a lavalier. Both of them are great and portable and do the job for me in any scenario. When I'm on the go, I usually use the Apple AirPods as they are much more portable as my big Sony studio headphones and they still do the job well, so I prefer the small size. I also like to carry these Aperture MC, which are really small LED lights that can change to any color basically. They cost less than $100 each and they're super useful to add a bit of accent to any scene. I really don't like to carry a gimbal usually as I have stabilized lenses and like in-body camera stabilization and I don't really need it most of the time. However, if I use one occasionally, I recently picked up the Zhiyun Crane M3, which is a portable travel gimbal, which is powerful and professional and kind of serves my needs. It can support full frame cameras with smaller lenses and I much prefer the smaller form factor over larger gimbals. I use this Peak Design tech pouch where I like to throw all of the small items in that accompany my cameras. I have owned the identical one before that I have left on an airport uh, luckily, I had backups of all the data, but just in case, I have added another AirTag to this tech pouch 
just in case I forget it anywhere, I can locate it more easily. For storing data, I have two of these SanDisk SSDs, which I like to use for editing when I'm on the go, and I usually like to transfer the footage to my bigger mechanical hard disk later on when I'm at home to store away and back up the data. I still feel like I'm hauling a lot of camera gear overall, and this is quite a heavy bag. Last year I've made some big investments like purchasing the R5 and new lenses but I know it's going to last me for a long time and I use this professionally so I kind of can justify it to myself. I've tried other cameras like the Blackmagic 6K in the past but that simply didn't cut it due to the lack of autofocus and it was a little bulky and inconvenient and that is why I streamlined my kit as much as I can over the recent years and I wish I could downsize it even more but let's see what this year brings. Please let me know what you think of my setup and if I'm missing any cool items that I should add to my kit maybe. If you are into photo and video, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And that's it. I hope you have a good day. Big shout out to Artlist for believing in this channel and sponsoring this video. If you were thinking about getting an account, you can get two months for free, which is awesome. So just check out the link in the description.